Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. My name is Renato, I am a CAE Durability Engineer, and in this video I'm going to present to you about my new course that is about the finite element method for linear structure analysis. So if you are interested in learning about the finite element method to perform structure analysis, you should firstly take a linear structure analysis FEA course. And then the next type of course that you should take is about nonlinear structure analysis. And then after that, you can go through courses that are more focused on the application of the finite element method, such as this one, which is a cross-card FEA modeling project tutorial. So in this course, I teach you how to create this full vehicle module to run a, an explicit dynamic analysis of this going through a bump, for example. And then uh, we can use these to uh, calculate the stress and strain or even to calculate uh, the loads that are produced in each component of the front suspension assembly, for example. Okay, so... If you are interested in learning about FEA, the first type of course that you should take is about linear structure analysis. So now let me show um, what you're going to learn in this course. Here I have the uh, web page presenting everything that you should know about this course. And if I go down a little bit, you see that here we have a description about each module that we have in this course. In the first module, we are going to have an introduction to the method. So we are going to learn about some fundamental concepts about FEM and why this method is so important. We will also go through our first finite element analysis using a FEA software, which in the case of this course is going to be Abacus. So for all practical examples that we are going to have in this course, we are going to use Abacus, which is one of the most used commercial softwares in the industry. And then in the second module, we are going to learn how to formulate our first element, which is the linear elastic spring element. It's good to start with a simple element because we can start to have an idea of how the finite element method works. So the structure of this module is that firstly, we are going to study about the theory part related to spring elements. And then we are going to perform an example using Abacus, which is going to be the practical part of this module. And every module that we are going to have is structured like that. We are always going to have a theory part and then at the end we are going to have a practical part using Abacus. Okay, so in this module we are going to learn then how to formulate the linear elastic spring element. We are also going to learn how to assemble a spring system and then we are going to do workshop number two where workshop number one was in module one which was the first um, find an element analysis example that we performed, which is uh, this connecting lug shown here. Okay, so in here we are going to have workshop number two, which is one example in Abacus using a linear spring element. Now in module three, we are going to learn about the linear elastic bar element, which is one type of element that can only resist to axial loadings as it is shown here. So we are going to learn then about the theory related to it, and then we are going to perform um, a practical example using Abacus. In here, we are going to learn about the bar element. We are also going to learn about strain energy, Castiglione's first theorem, which is a very important theorem that is going to be used in the formulation of more complex types of elements, as you're going to see later. And also about uh, the minimum potential energy, which is also a concept that is going to be used for more, more complex types of elements. And then uh, at the end of this module, we are going to do workshop number three, which is one example in Abacus using linear bar element. Now in module four, we're going to learn about 
Truss structures, which is a type of structure formed by several by elements, as it is shown here. This is a type of structure that is widely used in the industry. And uh, in this module, then we are going to learn about trusses and also nodal equilibrium equations, element transformation, because in here, uh, you're going to see that we're going to need to use a local coordinate system because each element has a specific orientation. And then also we're going to learn about this very important technique, which is named as direct assembly of the global stiffness matrix. This technique is going to be used for all elements that we are going to formulate later. And then um, we are going to perform this very nice comprehensive example that is going to be an assembly of uh, several bar elements. And therefore, it's going to be a truss structure. And uh, this example is going to be nice because, well, we are going to build a spreadsheet that is going to solve this uh, this example and then we're going to um in workshop number four we are going to model this same structure using abacus to compare the results that we obtain in abacus with the results that we obtain in this spreadsheet now in module five we are going to learn about beam elements which is one type of element that can also be subjected to axial loadings just like the bar element but this one can also be subjected to transversal loadings as well and therefore bending moments so as always we are going to start with the theory part so we are going to learn about the beam element formulation beam theory fundamentals so if you didn't have if you didn't study about it in the university uh, that is not a problem because we are going to learn about uh, beam theory in a very detailed manner in this course and we are going to learn many other important things related to beam elements and eventually at the end of this module we are going to do workshop number five which is a structure analysis of a mezzanine which is a structure that looks like this one shown here and in module six we are going to learn about the equations of elasticity in a general manner. And this is going to be important for the formulation of the next more complex elements that we have. So in here, we are going to learn about the relationship between strain and displacement and the relationship between stress and strain and also about the equilibrium equations. This all is going to be used in the formulation of the next elements that we have. Then in module number seven, we are going to learn about matrix mathematics and solution techniques for linear algebraic equations. And this module is also to prepare you for the more complex elements that we are going to formulate later. Okay, in the finite element method, matrix mathematics is widely used and also you might have seen about an expression it is a matrix expression that looks like this matrix k which is the stiffness matrix multiplied by matrix u which is the nodal displacement column matrix is equal to matrix f which is the nodal force column matrix this matrix equation is actually representing a set of algebraic equations. So that's why we should learn about solution techniques for linear algebraic equations. Okay, so here we are going to learn about fundamental concepts of matrices, types of matrices, matrix operations, how to calculate the determinant, inverse, and also, um, we're going to learn about the Gaussian elimination method, which is related to solution techniques of linear algebraic equations, LU decomposition method, and gauss seidel method. In module 8, we are going to formulate the plane stress element, which is a little more complicated than the previous types of elements, and that's why we had modules 7 and 8 with a very important concept that are going to help in the formulation of these elements. So the plane stress element is simply a thin plate 
that is subjected to loads acting only in its plane. In here, we are going to learn then about the elast elasticity equations for plane stress. And we are going to formulate one element using plane stress condition, which is the linear triangular matrix. And there are some other things that we are going to learn that is related to plane stress condition. And as usual, at the end of this module, we are going to do a practical example in Abacus, which is workshop, or workshop number six, that we are going to analyze a rectangular plate with central circular hole, which is this one shown here. So we are going to analyze the stress concentration that occurs because of this central circular hole. In module number nine, we are going to learn about plane strain condition, which is similar to the plane stress condition. So in this module, we are going to learn about the elasticity equations for plane strain, and we are going to formulate one element using this condition, which is the linear rectangular element. We are going to learn about one very important technique that is actually going to be used for the next element as well, which is numerical integration using Gaussian quadrature procedure. And then we are also going to learn about numerical singularity, hourglassing and shear locking, and incompatible mode elements. Then finally, we are going to go through workshop number seven, which is a structural analysis of a C clamp. Then in module number 10, we are going to learn about the isoparametric formulation, which is a type of formulation that is used for elements that has a complex geometry. So we are going to learn about this type of formulation, and then we are going to formulate the next element of this course, which is the linear quadrilateral element. We are also going to learn about the singularity of the Jacobian matrix, which is a, an issue that we can have with this matrix. And then finally, we are going to go through workshop number eight, in which we are going to uh, perform a structure analysis in a connecting lug Using, using plain stress condition with isoparametric elements. In module 11, we are going to learn about general three-dimensional stress elements, which is one type of element that is widely used in structure analysis of all types. We are going to learn about the types of three-dimensional elements that we can have. So for example, the tetahedron, the hexahedron, and so on. Um, we are going to formulate the Fourneau tetrahedron element. And at the end of the module, we are going to go through workshop number nine, in which we are going to perform a structure analysis in an aluminium cast lug, which is this one shown here. And finally, in module number 12, we are going to learn about shell elements. This is the most used type of element to perform structure analysis of all types. We are going to firstly learn about plate element theory because you're going to see that the formulation of the shell element is actually a combination of the plate element with the plane stress element that had been studied before. And then after learning about the theory related to plate elements, we are going to formulate a plate element and then we are going to finally formulate uh, a shell element. And then at the end of this module, we are going to perform a workshop which is about a thin folded plate. Okay, so uh, this is the content of uh, this course, which is the first type of course that you should take if you want to learn about FEA. And you see that in this course, we are focused on learning how the FEA works and also um, we are focused on learning about the formulation of the most used types of elements. I hope you liked it and see you in the lectures.